somewhere between a third or half of all movies about hitmen have them have a crisis of conscience and want to leave the business. But I would still say that this is a memorable presentation of such a story. I was actually kind of surprised that only near the very end does it become that. I think I had practically forgotten that he hadn't said, this is my last assignment, until he actually did say it. And then right after that, it was obvious that he was going to get whacked. I mean, when I heard of the plot, that was one of the things they mentioned, that he says the Italy thing will be his last assignment. I thought it worked pretty well how he killed his girlfriend at the beginning. It was sufficiently shocking, and then when he takes Clara out to the forest, you know, out to the water, you think that he might shoot her. And she steps on the shell casing, you know, his past, his business creeping up on him, not leaving him alone. You know, it would have been a completely different thing if he had just been an average guy and his girlfriend stepped on a shell casing in a nature area. But because of his profession and because it was in fact him who threw it there, it's instead that thing of he's not with another killer, he's not even in an area that we would associate with hired killers, but yet his past won't leave him alone. I understand that some people apparently didn't quite understand why he killed the girlfriend at the beginning. I would say it's because she's a witness. You know, he's experienced and he has very honed skills, and through the film we see him gradually go against his instincts and it winds up killing him, but there, early on, he's still following what he deep down knows he has to do. I understand that the director has noted that the story has the structure of a western. The stranger comes into town, befriends some of the townspeople, but his past catches up with him, and then there's a duel. It was pretty interesting, and it fit really well. I think an argument could be made for the entire film showing him being in hell, like the preacher also says that he is. You know, at the very beginning and at the very end, he finds love and hope, and then he loses them. Not to random events, but to because of him having spent years killing people. You know, live by the sword, die by the sword. You know, his profession put that bullet right in the chamber, and his conscience pulled the trigger. He does take care of all of his assailants with relative ease. And this could be because of his considerable skills, but it does also support that he isn't really supposed to leave the situation. I mean, it happens. I mean, it happens in two different ways. At the beginning, he feels that he's forced to kill his girlfriend, and at the end, he himself dies. But in both cases, the end result is the same. He found love and hope and then he lost it, as a direct result of him having been an assassin. The symbolism of the totally not at all, in no way CGI butterfly was perhaps a little bit on the nose, especially with the very last shot, but it did also kind of work. You know, he notes that they're an endangered species, just like assassins, as we might read between the lines. He has a butterfly on the back of his neck where it is said that your soul leaves when you make a deal with the devil. And the very last shot with the panning up the tree, the butterfly goes higher and higher and finally leaves the shot upward as if it were Jack or Edward's soul. Honestly, I did kind of guess that her gun was because of the two dead prostitutes. But that bit did also kind of work as a... But that... But that bit did kind of work as showing the distrust that comes with 
his line of work. Once again, if he hadn't been, a, once again, if he hadn't been an assassin, and he just finds out that his girlfriend has a gun in her purse, he might just automatically tie it together with, oh right, two prostitutes have been murdered. That, or he will at least not come to the conclusion that, uh oh, she's out to kill me. I'm not sure if it should really have been Pavel trying to kill Clooney there at the end. I guess he's just too worried about letting him go. Maybe he doesn't think he'll ever catch up with him. I don't know, it just tends to irk me when suddenly the boss goes after the hero and it had felt largely realistic up to that point. When Matilda was aiming at Clooney, that bit really worked. I was pretty much convinced that she was going to shoot him. At one point I thought that maybe they were going to do a sudden move and she would accidentally shoot Clara instead. And I had of course seen earlier when Clooney took it back out of the case and started to mess with it. And at that time I did think, ah, he's going to booby trap it or something. But that moment still really worked when she was aiming at them. God has granted me many favors. He sends me choir boys, and they perform really well. Those were my thoughts on The American. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.